Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has had a fair share of adding content in the game. And the main fair share that was added in the game was none other than the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. With the Booster Course Pass's release comes new content that we weren't expecting, thus having us Mario Kart 8 Deluxers predicting what is to come when the final wave launches. However, throughout the content put in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and the Booster Course Pass, there are some things that end up being forgotten in the game. So in this video, I will be discussing four things that Nintendo forgot in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe after Wave 5 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass's release. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you are notified of all my future videos, pick up some merch from my merch shop, and join the channel for early access to videos. But all those things are completely optional. And with that said, let's get going before I forget to list off the forgotten features. Oh brother, this guy stinks! The first forgotten thing is something that, honestly, all us Mario Kart 8 Deluxers were hoping we would get in Wave 6. And that is new battle courses. I get it that the booster course pass is mostly for racetracks. However, after Wave 4, we cannot say that anymore because Birdo's release in Wave 4 and Petey Piranha, Kamek, and Wiggler in Wave 5, as well as leaving two empty slots left for the sixth and final wave. So when Wave 6 happens, we would like to have more battle tracks. So far, the only battle courses that we have are New York Minute, Paris Promenade, GCN Cookie Land, GBA Battle Course 1, and DS Twilight House, as they are the only battle tracks in Mario Kart Tour. And for something to arrive in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass, it has to arrive or be data mined in Mario Kart Tour. These battle courses are perfect additions to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe when Wave 6 happens. And oh my gosh, if adding these battle courses do happen, please, for the love of the Aegis, do not play the same music for all the battle courses. In this case, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's version of SNES Battle Course 1, City Courses Included. I am tired of hearing the same music over and 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 over again. It's like it's driving me crazy. Like, 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 something like this is guaranteed to make me scream my lungs out like Rex's scream from Xenoblade Chronicles 2. The next forgotten thing is what we got after Wave 3's release. When Wave 3 was launched, we received an unexpected addition to not only Versus Mode, but Battle Mode as well. Except for bob on blast And that is Custom Items. This feature allows you to customize what items will be in play. You can do things like entering the boom, to activating the 9 volt jolt, to even blue shells only. Telling you, the possibilities of making Mario Kart Deluxe more fun than how it was before Wave 3 launched, are endless thanks to this mode. However, when we enter the customization screen, we can see two blank spots in the bottom right corner of the selection screen. Because of this, we are to assume that Nintendo might add new items to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Two waves later, we never got any new items. So I am not sure if Nintendo is intentionally leaving these slots blank, but if these slots are blank after Wave 6 launches, it might drive a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxers crazy, especially me because I have extreme OCD. If Nintendo didn't want to add any items, they could just put the last four items in the middle of the items list, or just make it so that way they are not item slots and we should be fine. But if Nintendo were to add two more items, I would love to see the Mega Mushroom and Hammer as the items in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This next one mostly targets a certain group of people known as speedrunners. Speedrunners are people that try to beat a game or category from the game in the quickest amount of time. To the speedrunners that are watching this video, 
that speedrun Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with the base tracks and booster course pass tracks together, this one is for you. This one is another thing that Nintendo forgot about in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. However, it only happens on versus mode. The thing that they forgot is adding extra races to the race count. When the booster course pass was launched back in March of 2022, we were stuck with a 48 race count and not adding 4 more races when the booster course pass neither its waves was launched. 48 races covers all the base Mario Kart 8 Deluxe tracks. I did a test while making this script. I went on versus mode, put on a 4 race count as that's the lowest number I can do, set the track selection to in order, and see what will happen when I finish the final track of the base Mario Kart 8 Deluxe track roster, in this case, F-Zero Big Blue. With this test, I was asked one question. Does it go to Paris Promenade or Mario Kart Stadium? The reason why I ask that is because Paris Promenade is the final track in the Booster Course Pass. However, Mario Kart Stadium is the first track in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe overall. To my surprise, it went straight to Paris Promenade, not Mario Kart Stadium. Because of this test, I am not sure if Nintendo is going to increase the race count in Versus Mode to 96 when Wave 6 launches, so we will be able to do a full-on hardcore playthrough or speedrun of all the tracks without having to do one half Base 8 tracks and the other half Booster Course Pass tracks. But like I said, those watching this video that speedrun Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I hope you will get your wish that the race count will increase to 96 tracks, as that is how many total tracks we will be getting when Wave 6 is released. The fourth thing that Nintendo forgot in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe impacts mostly the booster course pass. And you kinda understand where I'm going with this, and it's not much of a feature, but it's still forgotten. That being texture improvements. When the booster course pass was launched, the graphics and textures were horrible, as they matched Mario Kart Tour's graphics and textures. A prime example include Toad Circuit, Rock Rock Mountain, and Koopa Cape. Toad Circuit has bad rock and grass examples. Rock Rock Mountain has a little bit of bad grass examples, but bad rock graphics, as well as Koopa Cape also having bad rock graphics. This led to a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe modder by the name of ZPL to action. He styled all the graphics in the Booster Course Pass better than how Nintendo did. To which, I advise you to check out his channel, so that way you can take a look at some of his work that he did to the courses in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. And I tell you, they look incredible. I am going to link ZPL's channel in the description so that way you can see his texture work. But as I was saying, when future waves were released, the graphics and textures got better. Like Riverside Park having outstanding grass and rock graphics, Athens Dash and Los Angeles Laps were having great grass graphics. Mushroom Gorge also has great rock graphics. But regardless, Nintendo lacked improving the graphics from the earlier waves. If they managed to make the cars move in Coconut Mall in the second wave, except for time trials, because they never moved in wave 1, why not improve the textures while they were at it? So there we have it. Those are the forgotten features in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Before I end the video, there is something that I have to announce. The announcement is, this will be the final video for a while. I will be taking a short, maybe longer hiatus from uploading. However, it will only last for about a month or two, as I will be starting my final full year in college in just a few weeks and I will be busy. But another reason why I will be taking this hiatus 
is because I don't want to experience what other YouTubers will experience in their career, burnout. Meaning I won't come up with ideas for videos. I mean, I still have ideas for videos, however, I just don't want to, you know, quickly get them on YouTube and have my brain fried of ideas. I just want to make my uploading times flexible, if you know what I'm saying. However, just because I won't upload, it doesn't mean that I won't pull off a few YouTube streams here and there. I can still do YouTube streams, it all depends on my schedule. Thank you so much for hearing my announcement as well as watching the video. Until next time, see ya!